the world is changing. Thanks to advanced technologies, new innovations are being delivered faster than ever before. But there's one change that could be here sooner than you think, maybe even sooner than I think. I'm talking about autonomous vehicles, which could be one of the most meaningful innovations of all time. Imagine giving every person who commutes an hour back each and every day. So why is Tesla one of the only companies really tackling this challenge? In this episode, I'll highlight some of the latest research on the autonomous vehicle market. If you're interested in Tesla's progress specifically, head to the timestamp on your screen right now. There, I'll show you how Tesla is attacking this challenge from every angle, and one key technology that could separate the winners from the losers. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it, starting with the latest market research as presented by ARK Invest analyst Tasha Keeney during their 2022 Big Ideas Summit. We think that autonomous cars could be very inexpensive to consumers. Autonomous taxis, autonomous ride hail systems could dominate urban transport. And ultimately, we think this could be one of those most meaningful economic productivity delivering innovations of all time. We think that the GDP contribution from autonomous ride hail systems could total around $26 trillion uh, by 2030. At its floor, we expect the price per mile that you could profitably charge a consumer could be about 25 cents per mile. Well, the price of point-to-point -point mobility really hasn't changed since the Model T rolled off the first assembly line. Thanks to higher utilization rates, that cost could be as low as 25 cents per mile. Of course, there'll be a lot of benefits to autonomous cars. We think they'll be a lot safer. They'll be extremely convenient. Um, but what do we think will drive demand? Uh, that is this price. Autonomous ride hail should attract, you know, not only people that are in the ride hailing market today, participants in the market today, but also car owners. Consumers value their time at about 60 cents to $1.10 per mile on average. You know, the high end of that is uh, time spent on commuting, work-related travel. The low end of that is time spent on, say, errands or, you know, personal travel. But today, consumers pay about $2 per mile on average for ride hail in Western markets. That's about the average price of an Uber today. So they're already paying up for this additional convenience of ride hail. Notably, this is also much higher than the marginal cost to drive, you know, the cost of gas, insurance, all the costs that you pay, you know, in a day to day or on an annual basis, as opposed to to the fixed costs, which are also included in our um, 70 cents per mile estimate. So the marginal cost is about 34 cents per mile. And importantly, if you go back to that 25 cents per mile estimate that we have, that's going to be lower than even the just the marginal cost to drive at 34 cents. So you can imagine that there's going to be a swath of demand worth at around you know, $134 billion. That's using price points from what we see in today's ride hailing options, that $2 to $4 per mile. And this is mainly in Western markets. Then at about $990 billion of opportunity, that will be for Western markets supplanting commuting miles. This is at the higher end of that value of time analysis that we did. And then another $2.4 trillion of opportunity for non-commuting miles. So this is, again, Western markets, the value that people place on their uh, personal driving miles. Well, moving away from Western markets um, to places like China, where ride hail is already extremely cheap, that's another $2.75 trillion worth of opportunity. Um, so that's coming in at around 50 cents per mile, a little bit lower. And then finally, this super long tail that you see here in the graph, an additional $5 trillion of opportunity at that low, low cost of 25 cents per mile for autonomous taxis. And, you know, Sam mentioned in this presentation that there could be neighborhood electric vehicles. You can picture this being a purpose built autonomous taxi. This is a segment of the market where you bring many more people in that aren't participating in ride hail today because they're all, all of a sudden getting access to really cheap point to point travel. So all in all, this sums up to about an $11 trillion addressable market. You can see here in the graph that in the next 10 years, you know, traffic could more than double. This is because, of course, we expect uh, autonomous ride hailing to be cheap and convenient. People might take it more often. But again, more importantly, it could expand the customer base and this could add to miles traveled. You know, we're seeing the early innings of air taxis. So these are autonomous electric machines that fly. They can transport individuals or a couple people at once. 
And when air taxis commercialize, they could cost roughly the price of what a taxi would cost you from Manhattan to JFK today. So an airport cab, but you'll get to the airport in about 18 minutes. And the trade-off at the time you can imagine will be either you take an air taxi or you take an autonomous taxi. The autonomous taxi, which you can see here in green, is going to be a lot cheaper, maybe just $10 for the whole trip, but it's going to take you longer, again, because traffic will be worse. So that's really the trade-off that you'll be making um, between the two. And then finally, I'll, I'll point out here on the graph, you see subways. We think that mass transit will likely still stay as one of the cheapest options out there. And when we look at the enterprise value that we expect off of these systems, we think the lion's share of the economics should accrue to the autonomous platform providers. These are the companies that actually own the technology stack, the companies building the technology that makes the car drive itself. So that alone, by 2026, we think could be an $11.7 trillion bucket of public enterprise value ascribed to these systems. If you think about the ride hail space today and the automakers and car rental, everyone in the car ecosystem today, we don't necessarily think that those players will be the ones to be around in the future. So as of November of last year, the enterprise value of, of all automakers was about $4 trillion. Remember that that's mostly gas powered car manufacturers, right? EVs are in the single digit uh, percentage points of, of all cars produced every year. Not every automaker will survive the transition to electric technology, let alone autonomous technology. Um, but those that do could enjoy a $1.6 trillion opportunity in the autonomous electric future. Lastly, fleet owners, that's about $300 billion worth of enterprise value by 2026. These are companies that could be, uh, you know, car rental companies that want to survive this transition, companies that house and maintain the vehicles. They serve as an important part of the ecosystem. All in all, we expect that autonomous ride hail could add about $26 trillion to global GDP by 2030. So on the losses side, almost $2 trillion of personal car sales. You may stop using your personal car, and then eventually the next, the next time you come up to purchase one, you won't. And these will be gas-powered cars mainly, right, that um, will no longer be purchased. There's about $660 billion worth of fuel revenue um, that could go away. You know, electric vehicles require much less maintenance than a gas-powered car. We expect all autonomous vehicles to be electric. And lastly, on the losses side, medical revenue, property repair revenue, these are buckets that we're assigning to the revenues that are spent on car accidents. And then actually one more bucket is insurance. We expect autonomous cars will be 80% less likely to get in an accident than human driven cars today. So um, insurance will likely be cheaper on these vehicles. Moving to gains, the total gains are about 30 trillion. This includes uh, 16 trillion productivity uplift, $10 trillion in service revenue. This is the, uh, the revenues that we expect off of the taxi platforms themselves, an economic gain for the, for the preservation of life, and then about a trillion dollars of incremental autonomous car sales. If you look at the graph on the right, we think that the impact from robo taxis could be two to three percentage points on annual GDP by 2030. So there are a couple big takeaways from Tasha Kini's research that I want to highlight. The first insight is how much of the total addressable market for autonomous ride hailing is unlocked as you lower the cost per mile. Here's an easy way to think about it. If an iPhone costs $3,000, almost no one in the world would be able to buy one. If that same iPhone cost $300 instead, almost everyone could buy one. So the total addressable market is way, way bigger. Even though we dropped the price of the iPhone by 10X, the amount of people who could get one went up by 10,000X. That relationship between lower cost and higher demand is almost never a straight line. And it turns out that today's market for autonomous ride hailing is tiny. If you replace all the Ubers and Lyfts and taxis on the road today and charge between two and four dollars per mile, you unlock a little over 1% of the total addressable market in terms of miles driven, just 1%. If you can knock the price per mile down from $2 to $1 though, you unlock another 8% of the total addressable market. So we cut the price in half, but we just 7x the amount of people who could afford to use the service. If you cut the price in half again to around 55 cents per mile, you unlock another 45% of the market. 
making that market five times bigger again. And if you cut the price in half again, you unlock the rest of the global market, including all the people who couldn't afford any other kinds of travel before, but can now afford to take an autonomous robo-taxi. Here's an interesting slide from Tesla's Autonomy Day back in 2019. Tesla says their robo-taxi price per mile will be under 18 cents, and they'll take a gross profit of 65 cents. So let's call it 85 cents per mile total, just as an example. I know a lot of numbers could change between now and then, but 85 cents per mile would put them right between the $1.10 and 60 cent brackets, meaning Tesla could realistically serve something like the 25% wealthiest market for autonomous ride hailing. That's a decent slice of the pie, but the flip side here is there's a huge incentive to build a cheaper, reliable, and more scalable solution to this global problem, whether it's a $20,000 car or some sort of even smaller solution. Every penny that Tesla can knock off of their price per mile unlocks way more potential customers. To do that, Tesla needs to keep making improvements to their software, hardware, and their manufacturing capabilities, all while keeping their promise of being sustainably driven. All those different technologies are why I make so much Tesla content. There's just so much to talk about. In fact, there are a lot of really smart investors covering Tesla's technologies from a lot of different angles. That's why one place I've been uploading my research in written form is to public.com, an investing social network that I feel really brings together the best of both worlds. On the investing side, public.com is free to use with no account minimum to get started, doesn't charge fees for standard trades, and allows you to buy slices of stocks for as little as $1. I'm just as excited about Public's community, where I've been able to exchange investment ideas with thousands of like-minded, long-term focused investors, like this article I wrote on Tesla's Gigafactories. So if you want to check out even more of my Tesla content, or just want to know when I buy the stock myself, consider joining the thousands of people following me on public.com. I'll leave a link to my Tesla article in the description below. And whether you're looking for a new home for your own portfolio, or you just want to support the channel, you can go to public.com slash ticker symbol U, and you'll receive a free slice of stock worth up to $70 when you fund your account. That's a win-win if I've ever heard one. So I'll leave a link to that exclusive offer for you in the description below as well. Going back to ARK Invest's big ideas, the other insight here is the companies that own the autonomous technology stack will dominate enterprise values, not the fleet owners or even the automakers. So 88% of the enterprise value will be captured by platform providers that don't exist yet and are not guaranteed to be the same companies making the cars or providing the service to the end user. For the most part, this is an artificial intelligence problem that will get solved with mountains of data. So some of the companies competing in this market may not build a single car at all. That's why companies like GM and Uber may not really stand a chance. Tesla is vertically integrating all three of these businesses at once, an autonomous platform provider, an autonomous electric vehicle manufacturer, and a fleet owner, depending on the final business model of their ride hailing network at scale. So let's talk about how Tesla has unlocked some of that scale already. Tesla's current vehicle fleet gives it access to between 30 and 40 million miles of data every single day, which is up from 20 million miles of data per day last year. All that data is helping their AI perform better in incredibly difficult situations, like getting cut off in very tight spaces or pedestrians walking through the car's lane at awkward angles. The AI is able to plan smooth maneuvers with high confidence so that the vehicle doesn't end up doing things like starting a lane change that it won't finish, braking more often than necessary, or driving too aggressively. Tesla's neural networks have already solved many complex challenges that were previously considered impossible, which has dramatically increased the probability that their robo-taxis will make it to the market. Here's another big reason that Tesla is positioned to win the race for autonomy at scale. They've moved their full self-driving system to vision only, no more relying on radars and no LiDAR. Remember, expensive parts and more maintenance means higher costs per mile. Doing this task with cameras only is a massive deal because you want to track stuff in the present and predict its motion in the future. And to do that, you need to have a very good estimate of range. You need to know how far away something is to understand how fast it's actually moving and if it's getting closer or further away over time. This is a really hard challenge to do from single images in real time, but Tesla has proven that they're great at pulling that information from video. My background is in computer vision and radar signal processing, and I can tell you this is an incredibly hard problem to solve. It's one thing to be able to do this when the Tesla is stopped on a flat road and when it's sunny out. It's another thing entirely to do this in bad conditions like snow, fog, and rain. Well, during their most recent AI day, Tesla showed how they asked the fleet for every clip where things fall off a vehicle and disrupt the vision of the cameras. And in one week, the fleet returned 10,000 clips of this happening. 
Only Tesla has access to so much data of such a specific thing happening because it's their cars and their cameras and their software returning that data for processing. This is something that Tesla's artificial intelligence could solve at scale only because they have such a massive advantage thanks to their existing fleet on the road today. I also want to point out one other reason that vision only makes a lot of sense that no one was really considering before Tesla's most recent AI day. Since Tesla dropped radars, they no longer need to simulate radar data when they want to train their AI. Since the whole system is now vision only, Tesla can run vision only simulations of road conditions using photorealistic physics engines and not worry about what the radars would see in each case. They're basically able to give their AI more practice by letting it play a very realistic video game when there aren't enough real world examples for that AI to work with. The way Tesla has solved this problem is the actual reason it could be game over for other automakers who would need to simulate what everything would look like not only to their own cameras but also to their specific sensors like radars and lidars. It's hard to find another company so far ahead of its competition in terms of unlocking and serving a brand new market like autonomous ride hailing. I live near Tampa, Florida, and I would definitely give up my car if I could get around town for cheap enough and be able to catch up on things like shows or social media instead of having to drive. Comment below with your thoughts on autonomous ride hailing. Would you ride in a self-driving car today? Would you stop owning or leasing your own vehicle in favor of ride hailing if it was cheap enough? How cheap would it have to be? I'm excited to hear your thoughts. In a future episode, I'll spend some time talking about Tesla's real competition in this area, not other automakers, but other big data and artificial intelligence companies. If you're interested in seeing that research, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel with all notifications turned on. That's a great way to invest in the channel that invests in you. Besides artificial intelligence, Tesla also has a massive lead in robotics and energy storage, a lead that could end up destroying companies like Ford and GM. If you want to know exactly how I think that'll play out, check out this video right here. Or if you want to learn more about the future of artificial intelligence and some other great stocks in that industry, this episode right here is for you. Either way, stay long, stay strong, and thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.